Magma reservoirs are building below Mount Vesuvius, and scientists can't rule out a dangerous eruption in the future. Here are the details. Any eruption at Mount Vesuvius comparable to the one that destroyed Pompeii in 79 AD is unlikely in the next few decades. However, magma is building up in a chamber below the volcano, and smaller but still very dangerous eruptions like the ones in 1944 or 1631 are harder to predict, according to scientists behind a new science advances study. The scientists used garnet crystals from the four largest eruptions of the last 10,000 years to calculate how long magma resided in a chamber below the volcano before being spewed out, and thus when equivalent eruptions are likely to occur. The crystals helped show that rather than magma coming directly up from deep below the volcano, larger eruptions all involve a top chamber filling with magma that subsequently cools and crystallizes over hundreds and even thousands of years. When hotter magma later flows into the top chamber from below, it causes pressure rises which can force the cooler, more explosive magma upwards. With these findings in mind, seismic surveys now show a magma reservoir building between 6 and 8 kilometers below Vesuvius. But scientists believe it is unlikely to provide the basis for a 79 AD-style eruption because the last major eruption at the site was only around 80 years ago, which means there's not been enough time for the cooler, more explosive magma to substantially accumulate yet. However, smaller yet still dangerous eruptions like the ones in 1944 or 1631 can occur after shorter periods of accumulation, according to the study, and thus close monitoring remains necessary. That study comes at a time when mines have been focused on volcanic activity by the recent eruption in Tonga. Pictures of the devastation that ripped through the island nation are still emerging, but SciTech Daily points out that the smallest of the four eruptions involved in the Vesuvius study was likely around the size of that one. Archaeologists in Pompeii have unearthed a skeleton that had been pinned underneath a 300-kilogram block of stone during the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in AD 79. The decapitated remains are believed to be that of a 30-year-old male. Lesions on the tibia suggest a bone infection, which could have hampered the man's ability to flee. The bones were found on the first story level over a thick layer of volcanic fragments called lapilli. This suggests he survived the first phase of the eruption. Scientists think the men had been hit by hot pyroclastic flows while fleeing. A massive rock thrown by the volcanic cloud then collided with his upper body, crushing his head and thorax. According to new research, a powerful volcanic eruption in modern-day Alaska around 44 BC may have contributed to the Roman Republic's downfall on the other side of the globe. This study was published in Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. The eruption left a 10-kilometer-wide crater in Mount Okmok that survives to this day. The research team, led by Joe McConnell of Desert Research Institute, said in a news release. The event likely caused destabilizing environmental changes that paved the way for the imperial system after Julius Caesar was killed. According to the team, the estimated time of the volcano's eruption, which would have led to climate-altering levels of fallout, coincided with a period of extreme cold, crop failures and famines in the written records. Scientists used various materials to date the eruption, including tree ring-based climate records from Scandinavia and the volcanic remains called tephra from the Arctic ice. The climate records and tephra both supported the hypothesis of an eruption in Alaska. In the year 79 AD, Mount Vesuvius exploded catastrophically Below it, the Roman city of Pompeii and coastal villages like Herculaneum were now caught in a terrible vice. As the volcano blew a gargantuan cloud of hot ash into the sky, the mountain kept on shaking and everyone fled, but for thousands it would be too late to flee. Around midnight, the cloud collapsed, sending its deadly hot ash rolling downward at a terrifying speed. The people of Herculaneum were trapped between the mountain and the dark sea, and out of the dark sea came hope in the form of the Roman Navy's elite Praetorian Guard. The BBC reports that this is the finding of a recent scientific study of the remains of a Roman soldier found on a beach, next to the remains of 300 civilians from the now-buried town of Herculaneum. Scientists say the coins and objects found on the soldier's skeleton mark him as an officer of the elite guard. It is believed the officer was part of a heroic rescue mission to get people on boats when the beach was hit by a pyroclastic flow. The Tonga volcano eruption sent literal shockwaves across the globe at the weekend, prompting a string of tsunami warnings. Here's what's happening. 
The once in 1,000 years eruption of the Hanga Tonga Hanga Hape volcano on Saturday did not emerge from smaller volcanic cones as in previous eruptions in 2009 and across 2014 and 2015. Rather, it blasted out of a 5 kilometer wide underwater caldera, according to Shane Cronin, professor of earth sciences at the University of Auckland. The power of the explosion is likely because magma rose up from the caldera so quickly there was no time for a film of steam to form and allow the magma's surface to cool as it passed through the water. Instead, hot magma came into direct contact with cold water, creating explosions which split the magma up and forced it into further contact with additional cold water, causing additional explosions. The resulting blast reached supersonic speeds, sending out a sonic boom that reached New Zealand, according to the Associated Press. Unusually high waves drowned two people in Peru and caused widespread tsunami alerts elsewhere. Damage to internet connections meant that very little news of the volcano's impact on Tonga was available initially, though the Associated Press reported tsunami waves crashing across the shore and people rushing to higher ground. Two smaller eruptions occurred at the same volcano on December 20th and January 13th, and previous 1,000-year major caldera eruption episodes involved many separate explosion events, meaning several weeks or even years of major volcanic unrest could be due, according to Professor Cronin's article in The Conversation. In line with this reasoning, CNN reported on Monday that the volcano had erupted again for the third time in four days, though unlike Saturday's eruption, which was likely the biggest recorded anywhere on the planet in more than 30 years, there were no additional tsunami alerts. Of course, though the scale of this eruption caught many by surprise, it is not the first time in recent months that tsunami fears have risen, with the eruption on La Palma prompting similar, though less urgent, fears. The threat of underwater volcanoes is also nothing new either, with the Smithsonian Institution reporting that more than 70% of all volcanic eruptions occur underwater. Just last week, National Geographic reported that a group of volcanoes in the Aleutian Islands could be a part of an underwater supervolcano the same size as the Yellowstone caldera. In a study presented to the American Geophysics Union, scientists suggested the six volcanoes collected in an Aleutian Island group called the Islands of the Four Mountains are actually standing on the edges of one massive underwater caldera. The scientists now say they are uncovering evidence of such a large bowl under the ocean, as well as rock samples and undersea ridges that indicate a cataclysmic volcanic eruption did very possibly cause the depression that rings the six active volcanoes of the island group. At the same time, controversial plans to take advantage of minerals generated by such underwater volcanic activity are also gaining traction right now. This is because when shifting tectonic plates create hydrothermal vents at the bottom of the ocean, these vents interact with seawater to create polymetallic nodules, polymetallic sulfides, and ferromanganese crusts rich in valuable minerals such as cobalt and nickel, which are used in many forms of green technology and mobile phones. With that end goal in mind, in June, the Pacific Island nation of Nauru activated a legal trigger to allow a Canadian company to start mining in two years' time, even if the UN has not written rules guiding the practice, leading to fears that a dangerous gold rush could be about to kick off. Pyroclastic flows are made up of a basal flow of volcanic ash, lava, rock, and gases, which move beneath a cloud of ash. Their temperatures can exceed 1,000 degrees Celsius, and they can move at 700 kilometers per hour. Typically, pyroclastic flows move downslope, but they can go uphill when the ratio of gas to ash is higher. This is known as a pyroclastic surge. These dense pyroclastic surges can even move over water. Pyroclastic flows generally destroy everything in their path, including vegetation, buildings, and people. There are generally two kinds of pyroclastic flow. The first type forms when an eruption column cools and the ash becomes too dense to maintain an upward thrust. The second type is rarer and occurs when so much pressure builds up inside a volcano that it erupts laterally and boils over. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.